Hello folks, MK here, and today we're checking out the brand new update for Idle Heroes that landed in the middle of this week. This isn't a whole new event, it is just some small tweaks and changes which should improve or potentially worsen the gameplay for lots of you folks out there. For established players, this will offer a nice big change that's going to increase the amount of rewards you get a month. For newer players, it could potentially make monthly events a little bit more challenging. So folks, let's go take a look at this week and see what's in store. Now, the first thing you should notice is if you own the monthly carnival card, you've been given some, well, I guess the term I can use is uh, complimentary things to kind of apologize for the update. Basically, you're getting a lot of the stuff you'd normally get from monthly events in here. So 2300 gems, I got 30 glorious relics, 80 universal crystals, and also 10 orange artifact exclusive fragments, which is quite nice to be fair. They're, they're going to help us out a little bit, but it's nothing too amazing. But that's about it for compensation. If you guys didn't receive compensation, it's because you didn't purchase the monthly carnival cards. So if you were a free to play player, don't get annoyed you didn't get free stuff. It's only for people that spent. Now, why have they done that? Well, if you go take a look at the monthly events, there's been some tiny tweaks and changes. The rewards don't look too different from normal. The main difference is actually Infusion and Awakening. They've massively increased the cap that you could do this. So originally it was 28, 3, and 1. Now it's 50, 15, 5, and 2. A little bit concerning, honestly. Now for people to fully max out a month of fusing and awakening, you need to fuse 50 five-star heroes from your four-star shards, which makes Seal Land even more important. Getting those four-star shards in is crucial to be able to do this. In addition, you need to fuse six-star heroes 15 times. That's a heck of a lot of fusing. Also, nine-star heroes, you need to do that five times. And then finally, you need to awaken a hero to 10-star two times. Now, it's not so bad if you compare these two things together, because actually, five nine-stars is enough to go ahead and make two 10 stars because you need two nine stars plus a six star to make a 10 star now i imagine with the increased amount of puppets we get just in general in the game if you consider celestial island consider the amount of six star selection chests we get now from sky labyrinth and imps adventure it shouldn't be too difficult to do the higher ones uh, and hopefully with all the five stars you're making you should be able to fuse up to six star so to make this easier for you guys, it's really important that you follow one of the unspoken rules of Idle Heroes, which is to go ahead and when you're fusing 5 stars, to ensure that you're fusing ones that can be made to 6 star. If you notice, Deathsworn, Glen, and Bone Carver are all available in higher forms. There's Bone Carver's better form, there's Glen, there's Deathsworn. However, if you were to fuse someone like Bone General over here, he doesn't have a 6 star form. So, if you have a ton of Bone Generals, you won't be able to make a 6 star. So, be smart. Make sure that for each faction, you're going through and fusing 5 stars that can be made to 6 star. So, as I said for Shadow, it's Deathsworn, Glen, and Bone Carver. For Fortress, we have Christian, Sierra, and Roy. For the Abyss faction, we have Norma, Illyria, and Destroyer. And for the Shadow faction, we have Grey-Eyed, Zekis, and Thale. So just make sure they're the five stars you're going for because they can all be made to six star. Now with that, because they can be made to six star, they can actually be made to nine star as well. So we'll count towards your nine stars. But do remember if you need to fuse 10 stars, you need five copies of an original five star a hero that doesn't have a four star form. So for this, you're going to need to look at other heroes that could fit that bill, such as Dominator here on the VIP series. I actually have five copies of, so he's one worth considering for me. In the Fortress faction, I don't actually have five copies of anybody, so that's also a mark of concern. In the Abyss faction, I got plenty of queens, but no one else, and queen I'd rather save for Halora. And finally, in Forest, I'm pretty stacked across the board, but still don't really have five copies of anyone. I guess I could make Heart Watcher and then feed her off, but I don't really like that idea. I got three Valkyries, three Molasses, so I'm quite close to certain individuals. Now, to make getting heroes a little easier, they've changed what's available in the altar store. So if you go take a look at this, this has been completely changed, and I really, really like this. So the light and dark heroes are no longer Dark Arth and Dol and Gurk. They're much more relevant heroes, Aspen and Asmodel. Now, the really nice thing about both of these is they will have Transcendence forms. Asmodel already does. Aspen will be getting one. Aspen's also a pretty solid first E5, uh, which is quite funny considering that he's... Not a very popular dark hero, but he is very good. Also, bear in mind, he is a dark hero, so you shouldn't really be building him into first E5, but it's fun to say that. And also, we have Garuda, Cthulhu, Penny, and Horus. The, basically, the OG4 when it came to good first E5s. 
back in the day before heroes like Tix and Ithaca even existed, when people were like, who should I build as my first E5? These were generally the four we'd recommend. Now Penny is really the only one that really holds into this, and Garuda obviously due to her accessibility. Cthulhu and Horus are less appealing, but there could be an argument for making Horus, considering he can be pretty good with Void Imprints, but only in certain game modes he doesn't really hold his weight into endgame. So again, if you were going to buy any of these just to go ahead and build someone as a first E5, Penny is definitely the one that appeals to me. In addition, they've actually made it easier to get light and dark food. For 2400 you can buy light and dark 5-star puppets, which is nice. I don't know if it's worth it, but it's certainly appealing. And in addition, you can get 5-star puppets in Forest, Abyss, Fortress, and Shadow, which is really nice. There's 1600 a pop. And finally, you got some 4-stars here, which are a pretty varied selection. And they're all quite nicely 4-stars that can be made to 6-star, which is good. It's Thale, Illyria, Christian, and Bone Carver. So really good choices from DH Games here. I like it. We've also got Divine Spirit and Dark Spirit here for the Light and Dark factions. Again, really nice choices. So they've definitely refined the store, made it a lot more relevant, and I think they've been very clever. The heroes they've selected have future-proofed this, because both these light and darks are transcendable, so they'll always be relevant. The four heroes you see here are really good first E5s, so actually I can see them being like appealing to early players, but they're not OP, they're not super powerful, they are probably lower-end elite heroes, it's only Garuda and Penny that really do stand out. And the rest of this stuff is dummies, so it really doesn't matter who they are, they are just dummies sitting around. The only thing that's slightly upsetting about this is that you no longer can just grab a faceless copy or a Margaret copy if you needed one more to get to 10 star. So unfortunately those heroes aren't available anymore, but actually when you compare the price of these new items to the price of them, it's actually way better value. Considering a faceless would have set you back 2,000 altar stones, it's nice to see that you can actually just go ahead and grab a puppet for 1600 which is less and has functionally the same purpose that a five-star hero would so that's really sweet i like that they've done that now another thing they said they were going to do is adjust the arena store although i don't see any change here they may have adjusted the prices a little bit they may have added like one more portrait but i don't actually see anything that stand out different you can still buy Blessings, you can still buy Profit Orbs. I don't think they've changed too much here. If I'm missing something, let me know, because I really feel like I am. But to me, it looks exactly the same as it was. Maybe they'll change this later, but they haven't by the looks of things for me. And the other final change, which I think is actually pretty needed, it's something we've been asking for for quite some time, Broken Spaces has got two extra stages. Stage 8, which is Carrie and Tara, which is kind of terrifying, and Stage 9, which is Drake and Russell, and the rewards you get for these are phenomenal. For example, this Russell and Drake one is giving 180 million gold and 110 million spirit, which is crazy. That's really going to help whales get materials, or just anyone that's trying to push forward and build heroes. So this is going to be really Really useful and stage eight here it's giving 170 million gold and 100 million spirit so i can't wait to go and fight these things on the vip series we're not going to be doing that today we'll probably try that in one of our actual episodes of the vip series this is just me letting you know what's here so carry and tara some thoughts for these as we go in seals from tara are going to suck they're going to reduce your hero's ability to do things and getting energy stolen from carry is really going to hurt so just be aware of that when you're going into this fight and stage nine i have a bad feeling that that drake debuffing the defenses on your heroes combined with Russell's arrows is going to be really painful because you've got to remember both of those target the hero with the lowest HP so this could be a really really difficult wave if it gets out of hand because Drake and Russell do synergize really well with each other we were saying that when they came out in their own anniversary a few uh, just over a year ago now but actually together it's going to be a very terrifying Broken Spaces wave. And I like that, actually. I like the PvE. It's getting a little bit more challenging. Let's compare the levels. So it's 350 on the Ada and the Aspen, 360 on the Carry and the Tara, and 370 on the Russell and the Drake. So I am imagining this is still going to be tricky. And stay tuned with the VIP series to see how we manage against that. I think for established players like my other account, for example, which I'm going to switch to right now on server 22, if you go take a look at this, I think established players, they'll still be totally fine. Like looking here, all I have to do is probably send in a couple of Rogans. We've got Olivia there, Ignis. I'll feed that into an Ithaqua and suddenly we're doing a ton of damage. We'll throw in Halora as well. In fact, I imagine the OG who also helps run this account has probably already done it. Let's go take a look at Broken Spaces. Oh no, Broken Spaces hasn't been done. Maybe I'll save that for another video in the future. Maybe we'll do that tonight. Hmm, that's interesting. Stay tuned for that one. I would actually love to see if we can do a nine ticket clear 
from one to nine. We'll try and build a nice optimal team. So yeah, folks, that'll be fun. But all in all, that is this update. It's pretty standard. There's nothing out there that's crazy. It's just future-proofing the game and making it a little bit more relevant with what's to come. So I like that. So again, we've got two boss stages in Broken Spaces. They've raised the quest cap and adjusted things for Fusion and Awakening. And as well, they've adjusted the Arena Store, supposedly, although I can't really see it. And of course, the Soul Stone Store has changed. As well, you'll notice in Brave Trial, they've added a few more heroes in there. So as we go through, you should hopefully find some more modern and relevant heroes, which could be pretty handy for you guys who are going ahead and building maybe your second or third E5s. And hopefully there's some pretty cool heroes in there. So let me know in the comment section if you find anyone cool in Brave Trial. I look forward to hearing who you come across. Potentially Tix is in there. That'd be pretty nice. Anyway, folks, it's been an absolute pleasure. Hopefully you enjoy this update. Let me know in the comment section what you think, and I'll see you next time. Happy idling!